Now let's look at another very common MSI logic circuit known as the multiplexer. So a multiplexer can be thought of as a digital router or digital switch. So the symbol, that multiplexer actually has a unique symbol. So what it looks like is it's got a longer side on the left and a smaller side on the right and the outputs are on the right. And let's, let's look at a two, two to one multiplexer as an example. So I have A and B and I have an output F. And the way that this works is what I'm going to do is I'm either going to connect A to the output F or B to the output F depending on another input which is called a select line. And the truth table can be written as follows. So I'm going to list the output and I'm going to list what the inputs are. So I'm going to have, or excuse me, I'm going to list what the output is, except that the output is actually one of the inputs. So for example, I can say F gets A when under a certain situation, and then otherwise it gets B. But what's the situation? Well, it turns out that the situation is the value of the select line. So what I do in my truth table is I have select is a zero when the output, if select is a zero, the output gets A. And if select is a one, it'll get B. So look at this truth table. It's a little bit different than what we've seen before because it doesn't explicitly use ones and zeros for what the value of the output is. So F is actually going to be A when select is zero or B. So this is a little bit different, but it does describe the functionality of what we're trying to do. Now this is why we kind of think about this as a, a digital switch because really you can kind of think of it as like A comes over here and then B comes over here and F is going to switch back and forth connecting them uh, basically going like A or B, A or B, A or B. Except that as we see when we implement this, it's actually not, not exactly a switch, but it acts like that. So that's the circuit that I want to design. And so let's take a look at how you would go about doing this. Well, A, B, and C are the inputs into the combinational logic circuit. So we're going to have some combinational logic circuit that produces F, and F is a scalar. And then we're going to have A and B, and we're also going to have select coming into it. So one of the things we can do is to get this, in, this truth table into, more, into a more recognizable form, why don't we list select A and B in the truth table, and then we'll write what F is going to be. So let's start with select is equal to 0, which is 0, 0, 0, 0, and then these are going to be 0, 1, you know, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And so for the first one, if you think about it, this is where F is tracking A. So when I write these out, I've got 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Notice that it's tracking A. So I have 0, 0, 1, 1. That's tracking whatever value A was. So really what it's doing is, it is it's ignoring B, but it's looking at select, and it's saying whatever A is, I'm just going to copy it. So now we can come down here and I can do 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And in this situation, the output is going to track B. So I can come in here and I can say, well, okay, it's going to be 0, 1, 0, 1. And where did that come from? Well, it came from B was 0, 1, 0, 1. So now I have a true table which is much easier to implement or it's because it, because it's in the standard in you know synthesizable form. So it's got just inputs that are listed as binary codes and then it's got one output. So to do that, what I can do is I can just put it into a K-map. So let's do a three input K-map. And what we'll do is we'll have our eight cells. And we'll have an input of select. An A up top, and then we'll have B over here. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And we'll have 0, 1. And we'll come in, we'll pop these, in, these outputs in here. So I'll get 0, 0, 1, 1. And then I come over here and I go 0, 1. And then I go 0, 1. So now I come in here and I'm going to circle 1s. And let's go for the uh, minimal sum. So I can go here in here, and by minimal sum, I notice that I could have put another prime input in there to, to form what we call the complete sum, which is all prime implicates, but let, we, let's not do that. Let's try to create the most minimal logic expression. So I'm going to say f is equal to, and let's get the prime implicate logic expression, the, the um, product term. So I'm going to have select was a 0, a was a 1, so I'm going to have select not ended with a, 
and then B was excluded from that term. And then we'll have over here, we'll have select was a one, and then ended with A was excluded from the prime applicant from the product term, and B was included uncomplimented. So then what I do is I and them together, and that is my final logic expression. So if I draw this kind of in the same form as A and B coming on the left and select coming in from the bottom, the output of this is going to look like this. Notice that this is a sum of products logic expression. So I have two product terms which go through an or, and this is, you know, this is where the system is. And then what I have is I have A coming in to there, and I have B coming into there. And then I have select that comes in from the bottom, and it actually goes into this AND gate, uncomplimented, and it comes into this AND gate, and I'll put it as an inversion bubble. So that's the logic diagram for this. And if you look at this, you kind of notice that you're taking advantage of this whole thing where anything ORed with a 1 is itself. So if I say select is a 1 right here, then whatever B is, this output will be over here. So if B is a 0, the output will be a 0. If B is a 1, the output will be a 1 whenever the select on the other input of this AND gate is a 1. Well, anything coming through an OR gate will be its. So if I have 0 come over here, 1 will pass through. Actually, let, let's look at what the other product term is before we look at the OR gate. So then I come along and I say select is equal to 1. Well, select up here is going to be a 1. It's going to be a 0. Anything added with a 0 will create a 0 on the output. So for the, the input code select is equal to 1, I'll have a 0 up here, and I'll have essentially B right there. So now anything ORed with a 0 is itself. So I actually have B pass through there. So it actually works for the B situation. Let's take a look at what would happen if select was a 0. So in this situation, this is a 0, and this is going to be a 0 here, which makes a 1 on the input. Well, look at this. Now I have, I have this AND gate ordered with a, excuse me, this AND gate ended with one of its inputs being a zero. That means the output is a zero. Up here, I have a one on this input of the AND gate, so that means its output is going to be A. So then anything ordered with a zero is going to be simply itself. So then I got A. So it worked for that situation too. But it takes advantage of this whole notion of these select lines either pass a variable through the AND gate saying that anything and with a 1 is itself, or they basically deassert the AND gate by saying anything and with a 0 is a 0. Then, of course, once you get to the force page, that's a multiplexer right there. And if you think about the way that a logic diagram would look on one of these, it's whatever's passing through. So th let's just look at this example right here of, of a timing waveform. So let's just say that A was a very fast frequency uh, signal and B was a slower frequency signal. And this is what selected. So in this situation right here, we would have, you know, let's do it like this. In this situation right here, when select is a zero, you will simply be passing A to the output. So it mirrors it exactly. And then when select goes to a 1, notice that it changes and it mirrors B. So that's just the behavior of the multiplexer. Okay, so that's a multiplexer. That's a uh, 2 to 1. And what we can do now is we can look at trying to expand that a little bit to say, well, what other you know, sizes of these multiplexers are there? Well, if you think about it, what, what limited or what dictated the size? What dictated the size was the number of select lines. So we really had n being the number of select lines, and then you'd have 2 to the n inputs. So in this situation, if I had n, if I listed a table, and then I had the number of inputs, I would have, if n was a 1, then the number of inputs it could support would be 2. So you could think about it as the number of inputs it could address. So then what if I had two select lines? I could support up to four inputs. If I had three select lines, I could have up to eight. And if I had 4, I could go up to 32. No, no, not 32. We'd have 16, and et cetera, et cetera. So now what would it look like if I wanted to create one of these larger, larger multiplexers? Well, you can take advantage of the form right here of this whole notion of anything and with a 1 is itself, anything and with a 0 is a 0. 
And if I came along and I said, I want to create a three, no, 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 a four, two, one mux, mux is the shorthand way of saying multiplexer. What I know here is that since I have four inputs, I'm going to need two select lines in order to address them. So I always have one output. So I got one, two, three, four. I have A, B, C, and D. And then I have two select lines now. And we'll call them select one. We'll call it select zero. So now I'm sitting there, and here I am. And now what I can do is I can say, I'm going to implement this. I don't even need to do the Carnot maps. I can come in here, and I know that I'm going to have a sum of products logic expression. So I know I'm going to have an and. I'm going to have an and gates feeding an or. Except that I'm going to have four and gates. And if I think about it, they're all going to be fed into this OR gate. And what I can do here is associate which select code I want, which will pass each particular input. So let's see. I'm going to have A come into this one. And I'll have B come into this one. And I'll have C come into this one. And I'll have D come into this one. So a common way to do this is sometimes you write the input code uh, within the MUX symbol to actually show which one's going to be passed. So let's do it where I have, if I have input code 00, 0 on select lines, A will be routed to F. And if I have 0, 1, B will be routed to F. And if I have 1, 0, C will be routed to F. And if I have 1, 1, D will be routed to F. Okay? So all that's left in my logic diagram here is how I connect select 1 and select 0. So what I need to do is, if this one will pass A when I have select line 0, 0, I need to bring them in complemented. Okay? So that means that if I have 0, 0 on select 1 and select 0, they will come and both be complemented. They will turn these two inputs into 1s. And whenever you end anything with a 1, it will just be itself. So that will pass A. Then what I'm going to do, and what I'm going to draw these down like this, all the way to the bottom, and then we'll connect into them on the other, the other lines. Okay, so I come down, jump over that, jump over that, jump over that. All right, so now I'm going to do B. I need B to pass if I have an input code on the select lines of 0 and 1. So what I have is I want this select line, select line 1, to be inverted before it goes in, and then I want select 0 to be uninverted. So that would be the select code, or how it would implement the select code for B. If I came in with C, I'd want this to assert when I have 1, 0. So I want select 1 to be uncomplemented. But I want select 0 to be complemented, so I have an inverter right there. And then finally, I have select 1 uncomplemented and select 0 uncomplemented. Those are not inversion bubbles, those are uncomplemented. And that will take D, so I want to have 1 and 1. Now I have 1 and 1 here, and it will pass D. Again, whenever I address A, okay, it's going to have A here, and it'll have 0, 0, 0. And that will allow A to pass through. When I come along and I address B, then everything else will be a 0, and B will be passed, and so on and so forth. So then when I go to C, this will become a 0, and this becomes C. And then finally, when I address D, everything else becomes a 0, and this becomes D. So that's how you expand the multiplexer to larger and larger uh, implementations.